Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So today we're going to be talking about C and C++. I got this question. I thought this was a good one. I, I haven't really seen too many people ask this question, but I know that a lot of people are confused by it. I was confused by this earlier on in my career. It's titled C slash C++ Confusion. This question comes from George and he says, what I don't understand is why I always see C slash C++ in the job listing. As far as I know, those are different languages and somebody told me that C is mostly for hardware and embedded devices and I'm currently not that interested in. But why do we always see the C slash C++ thing and not only one language? Do people really always use both languages at the same jobs? Is it a bad idea to leave C aside and focus on C++ because I am really interested in competitive programming right now? So this is a good question. This is something that I, I had often wondered about. But I can tell you about this from my, if I go way back to my early days of programming as a C slash C++ developer, uh, mostly a C++ developer, and, and I can tell you why that this exists. So the primary reason why this exists, well, let, let's talk about the, the, what, the languages. So C++ is a superset of C for the most part. Now there's some small exceptions to this, but for the most part, everything that is valid in C is valid in C++. And so C++ is C++ more, the C++, hence the name. And so, those the so, but everything in C++ is not compatible with C, right? You can't write C++ code and run it in a C compiler, but you can take C code for the most part and run it in C++ because C++ is a superset. So that's where this initially comes from. Is is essentially you you can write C code and and you can use it in C++. Now there's different styles of writing the code, right? Because C is a procedural language. It's the, the idea, it's not object oriented, where C++ is object oriented, although there are ways to write object oriented C now, so I hear, sounds scary to me. So now why, why do we have this confusion? Why is there, why do jobs say C slash C++? Well, it's because there's a lot of developers, especially on legacy systems, and some old, old school developers that have been writing C slash C++ code for a long time, especially ones that have been writing C code for a long time, who don't really know the difference and sort of mix it together a lot, okay? So what I found commonly, I worked at a little little company called Hewlett Packard for a while, and I worked on some of the firmware there on some of the printers, and it was C slash C++. And it was literally C slash C++, because what you had was you had a lot of firmware developers there were old school C developers, okay? And some newfangled kid came in and said, you gotta start doing C++ and object-oriented programming. And they said, no. And they said, well, that's what we're doing. So they started using C++, but they started writing the C++ code as if it were C. They didn't use objects, or they, they created these huge, we call them God objects, right? It's a code smell. And they and they would they'd write it just like C, and so there's a lot of code out there that is written in that way, and so you got to have the C slash C plus plus skills. You're you're essentially using the C plus plus language features, but you're abusing them because you're not writing it in an object oriented way, and that's what a lot of development environments that are kind of old school in that way have that C slash C++. And because the languages can technically be mixed, because you can technically use C++ features and, and write them in a C way, or you can use write C code and put it into C++ compiler, that's, that's why, why you see that so often. Now, as far as recommendations, if you're a C++ developer, you should have some familiarity with, with C. I mean, you're gonna have to know C. If you learn C++, if you know C++, you know C. You just don't know how to write idiomatic C, right? So you might wanna look at how people write idiomatic C, especially in low-level firmware stuff, although a lot of it is C++ now, and, and gain that understanding. But in general, if you know C++, you, you, can, you can look at C code and, and understand what it's doing. And there are some, some context, some arguments for writing C instead of C++. C++ is a lot more complicated than C. 
So there, there's and there's plenty of environments where where they just do plain C. But I would not invest heavily into plain C. I don't think that's a good investment. I did a video on how to learn C++ and I basically said not to do that. And I still kind of stand by that. I mean, if you want to learn C++, it'll, it'll make you really smart, <laughs> too smart, and it'll, it'll be really hard, but it's rewarding, right? Because it, it's a difficult language to learn. There's a lot to learn and a lot of ways to blow your whole foot off. As the creator of C++, Barn Strossup said, famously said. So, there you have it. That's that's where we've got that, that little bit of history. If someone else has some background on this and would like to chime in, leave a comment below. If you've got a question for me, you can email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And if you like this video, if you want to subscribe to the channel, just go ahead and click that subscribe button below and you'll get more videos like this one about all kinds of programming topics, life, career, philosophy, fitness, you name it. We talk about it here on this channel as it relates to a software developer's life and beyond. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.